and welcome back to the channel. I'm Kristen Struzina. This is my husband Hans and we're with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And today we are back for part two of our two-part series, 21 Things You Need to Know If You're the Trustee of an Estate. Kristen and I are real estate planners, which is a designation through Keller Williams that we've been pursuing to help our clients and folks like yourself learn how to build, protect, and transfer generational wealth through real estate. We've been working with a lot of trustees this year, in particular people who are administering the trusts of an estate, and there's a lot of real estate to be sold, which is why we get involved in those particular situations. But there's a lot of things we picked up and learned along the way, talking to attorneys, talking to trustees and family members themselves, and we've helped compress them into this list, and that's what we're showing you here today. Before we get into this list, we just wanted to wish you our deepest condolences. If you're watching this video and you need this information, it's likely because someone has passed away or is going that direction. So we just wanted to give that to you. And hopefully the information in this video makes this process just a little bit easier for you and your family. Quick disclaimer, we are real estate planners. We're not attorneys, we're not financial planners, and we don't know your situation. These are things we've learned that generally apply to everybody but make sure you run this by your trusted professionals, the people who know the law where you're at and understand the documents that you're dealing with so you are doing the best you can as a trustee. If you've not already watched part one of this two-part series with tips one through ten, make sure to go back and watch that first. We will link to it above. So without further ado, let's dive into tip number 11. Tip 11 is to contact the Department of Motor Vehicles in the state where the individual lived. And this is to close out any IDs, any vehicle registrations, any disabled placards that may have been associated with the individual in order to sort of tie up that piece of their life. Tip number 12 is to reach out and contact the employment benefits companies. So we're talking about if there was a pension or some long-standing insurance relationship through a former employer or some other setup through their past or current employment that is was handling benefits and handing them over to them for one reason or another. So hopefully through their records, you'll be able to find that, but make sure you just put the lid on that one as well. Tip number 13 is super important. This is to make a list of all the physical assets in the home of the individual who has passed away. So this is, we're talking anything of value. This could be jewelry, this could be paintings or artwork, this could be computers or other electronics. Starting out with this big list of items is really important because then you can compare the list of items to the will that exists, if a will exists, and then really begin to carry out the wishes of the individual who has passed away. Rather than family members coming in and deciding that this person would like this asset and this other person would like this asset, and suddenly there's fighting within the family. So by starting with a big list of these assets, it can really save a lot of headache down the line. As well, it is your job as a trustee to maximize the benefit to the beneficiaries. So even if something doesn't have a lot of monetary value, it could also have sentimental value. And it's important to document those things as well and make sure that they go to an agreed upon place that all the beneficiaries are happy with, which we'll get to a later point on that one here in a minute. But before we get there, we're gonna to go to tip number 14, which is more relevant now than ever, which is to close all social media accounts. It's sort of disgusting and shocking how many people will try to impersonate somebody online who has passed away by either hacking their account or making a duplicate or what have you. So making sure Facebook and Instagram and even email and any other online account gets closed down because it is an identity theft risk if you don't. Tip number 15 is to close out all memberships to any clubs that this individual may have been a part of. So this could be things like health clubs, golf clubs, yacht clubs, and the like. And a really easy way to tell which clubs this person was part of is where they paid dues to every month. So go back and look at where the dues have gone, and that's a really easy way to tell. 
you may also consider adding subscriptions like Netflix or any food prep or any of those kinds of things that sort of fall under the subscription list to this point as well. Tip number 16 is to consider getting what's called a date of death appraisal. In general, especially when you have real estate, and this is very poignant for our world, the IRS for tax basis reasons is going to want to know what the value of an asset was at the time when someone passed away. In general, and again, consult the CPA, but in general, what we have heard from most CPAs is that the IRS, as long as the property was sold within about six months of the passing, will take that as the market value and use that as the, as the amount of money to use for tax basis and step up basis and all of that, which is not the topic of this video. But if you are, for example, going to rent it out and you're, or someone's going to move in and live in it or whatever the case is on the real estate, or you have rentals, you're going to want to know what the value was at that time, especially if you plan to keep it or it takes you two years to get to the point where you're ready to actually sell the house. So make sure you put that in your plans and get that ordered if you plan to keep the property for at least six months or more. Tip number 17 is to get in touch with the CPA and or accountant that have been working with the deceased in order to gather tax returns. You'll definitely want the last two years of tax returns as well as gathering any EIN numbers for entities that they may have had. In addition, you'll want to file the estate tax returns for the estate, which the CPA will be able to help you with. And every state has a different type of estate tax and estate exemptions and all of those things. So you really want to make sure you work with a trusted CPA to know that you're doing the best you can with the tax situation of that estate. And that leads us into tip number 18, which is to contact their financial planner. Find somebody who either they have been working with or who is really well versed in this chapter of closing and passing the assets on to the next generation while honoring what is being asked for in the trust and making sure that you're doing so in a very financially advantageous way because there are some really creative ideas that a lot of planners have out there that you might not even be thinking about. So get that expert opinion and make sure you're turning over every single rock you can so that you're passing on the maximum amount of value you possibly can to the rest of the beneficiaries. Tip number 19 is to contact a real estate planner. Now, real estate planners are great because they really take a holistic view of this whole process and walk side by side with you in order to bring together all the individuals you'll be working with. That includes the CPA, that includes the trust and estate attorney, that includes any financial planners and the like. So the real estate planner will be able to bring all these individuals together to help you and also to help you make decisions regarding the real estate associated with this individual. Now, we are real estate planners here in the San Francisco Bay Area in California, and there is a large network of real estate planners throughout the country that we are very plugged in with. So if you live in our area, feel free to reach out to us and we would be happy to have a conversation with you. If you don't live near us, then do get in touch and we'd be happy to put you in touch with a great real estate planner in your area. Tip number 20 is to do a couple of things. Number one is to communicate on a regular basis with the rest of the beneficiaries. Number two is to educate them on your role, what the trust documents say, and what you're trying to accomplish and why you're trying to do it. And then third, to the degree that is possible, like try to work out a few issues and talk about it. And you know, there's, there's often a lot of emotion and feeling in this moment and rightfully so, but it can be made worse when you layer money and he said, she said, they said, etc. on top of all that. Just make sure you communicate on a regular basis because what happens is as a trustee, you're sort of the decision maker. You're the one who has the power to some degree and you wanna make sure that the decisions you're making are in the best interest of those people and they know it. That will help you mitigate a lot of stress and strain and burn bridges and all that kind of stuff. So just make it part of your plan to email, phone call, group call, whatever you need to do to communicate on a regular basis. And finally, we have arrived at tip number 21, the final tip in this series, and that is to distribute the assets. Now you've done all this work to get here, so it's your job to distribute the assets according to the estate, according to the will, 
sell off anything that needs to be sold, and distribute the funds according to the trust. That rounds us out. If you want to get a copy of all these tips, what we've done is we put it into a nice PDF you can download right off of our website. The link is down in the description of the video. And make sure you go watch part one of this series, which is linked up here, which goes through tips numbers one through 10. We really appreciate you coming here, checking out our channel. Hopefully you got some value out of this and hopefully this will help you through this transition into this next chapter and give you a little bit of a roadmap so that you can be the most successful trustee you can possibly be. If you liked what you saw today, then don't forget to like the channel and hit the subscribe button because we'll be bringing you many more videos just like this one and you won't want to miss it. We'll see you on the next one.